in summer 2015. A Minecraft server was created by a user known only as Dilly Vanshnini. Its purpose was to act as a free build server for the subreddit of a fandom, and it became one of the most terrifying and awe-inspiring monoliths created by the internet. Six years, countless takeovers, espionage, and a collaborative build project now around the size of Grand Theft Auto V, containing endless wonders, deep story, and many, many dark things. This is the iceberg for the darkest server in Minecraft. I'd like to preface everything by saying that when I say this is the darkest, I mean it. It has a large focus on comedy, but it deals with a lot of heavy and potentially offensive subject matter. A lot of names will be censored to protect the identities of people that don't want to be associated. The sheer depth of this topic, as well as how unknown the subject matter is, requires at least 7 videos covering a 14 tier iceberg. This iceberg is actually handily outdated now, as over a year has passed since it was created and even more still has been added to the server. Still though, it will suffice, and I can always add on to things later. Due to a lot of concepts being entirely original, these early tiers will have a lot of segues to explain concepts they relate to, and the entries will act as a jumping off point. I still expect a lot of confusion, so feel free to inquire on certain things in the comments. Layer 1. The Height Limit Skies. This is the first layer. This is the most basic information and mysterious lore that can be garnered from a visitor after they visit for a while. You have nowhere to go but down. Entry 1. CP.zip Wow. Alright. If this one made you shit your pants, you probably should have considered my warning about this being heavy. Don't worry though, this acts as more of a haze for newcomers than anything else. One thing to learn about this server is that insanity posting, which was an early form of modern void memes or other such meme genres, was encouraged very heavily, particularly during 2017 to 2018. It led to a lot of insensitive jokes, which includes stuff like this. CP.zip was a supposed encrypted file folder on the dedicated server that was always hyped up as something dark. For context, the dedicated server, or commonly just referred to as the Deddy, is a Linux-based system that contains all of the server data and is accessible by staff members for maintenance. It is what runs the server itself. Thus, this implied something dark being hidden inside the staff team, and being only for their eyes. The connotation of what CP.zip is should be glaringly obvious, but the joke part of it is that it actually does exist. Just instead of legal content, all it has is pictures of monkeys. Monkeys and apes are very big on the server, in part due to the obsession of a very specific user, but more on that later. This is only the first entry, after all. Entry 2. Global Cooling Our first lore entry. This is a concept in the server's main lore. The server exists in a multiverse, with most in-server builds corresponding to main lore. Um, many of the concepts of the server lore correspond to real-world issues, but turned ludicrous and insane. Due to various convoluted reasons, including high amounts of space travel stripping energy from the Earth, the planet starts losing heat. Thus, extra pollution is encouraged and actually funded, which is the general joke of the whole thing. This in turn leads to the lore theme of companies. The world of the server is utterly dominated by horrible corporations and is basically an anarcho-capitalist hellscape. In terms of greater lore implications, it isn't that important, but it is a nice little funny thing to give a taste of what direction things will go. Entry 3. Hoopla Potions Oh, a personal favorite, and one I have personal ties to. 
Hoopla potions are potions that, utilizing a instant health potion of specific potency, can instantly kill anyone. Yes, even people in creative mode. More deep Minecrafters will recognize these as death potions, though they are special in the server and have their own history. It classifies as an illegal item, which are Minecraft blocks or items that are obtainable only via command. They aren't actually banned, just impossible to get normally. Quite a few users collect as many as they can as they apply unique characteristics to the limited block selection of Minecraft and can be fun to use. Hooplas in particular had their start on the server via a series of potions that the former staff member Jafk made in conjunction with my company from 2016, Ebolabs. These were called glitch potions, as these early versions didn't even show up as potions and instead appeared as large missing texture block models. These potions were later temporarily patched in 1.11 but were eventually remade over the years until the current Glitch Potion 2.0 was made by Ebolabs in 2020. Which still works. The change to the word Hoopla from Glitch is undocumented out of lore, but in lore it is attributed to the scientist Thomas Hoopla. Jafk also created the Hoopla potions in the lore, though he didn't discover Hoopla in general. In the lore, Hoopla is a construct of Hooplonium, a fictional element with its own complex and detailed science. The Global Monopoly, TBC, more on them later, uses Hoopla primarily for weaponry and energy. Ebolabs uses it for potions and more esoteric weaponry. You know, Hoopla could have a deep dive all to itself. In appearance, raw Hooplonium is light blue, reacts with obsidian, and is slowed by gold. There are entire diagrams explaining how the Hoopla energy reactors work using these facts. Overall, a massive fixture in the lore, and something that will be important probably forever. Entry 4. Sp I may not be able to go too in-depth on this one, as I'm not that familiar with it, but there are a race of ice cream people in the lore known as Sp Sp is the name of the home planet of the Sp, and is most well known for exploding violently and having ascent a sun to Earth. Instead of getting Superman, though, we got a mentally incompetent, depraved monstrosity named Sp. These are all core concepts to a lot of lore, and a huge divergent point in a lot of universes is when the Sp invaded Earth, allowing TBC again, more on that later, to assert its dominance by stopping them using hoopla weaponry. There is definitely more to it, but I'm not the most informed on Split, and these are the key lines of interest from it. Entry 5. The Wall. The wall constitutes the picture for the layer of the iceberg. The wall is a massive monolith of quartz filled with command blocks in a hidden private world. Originally kept gravely serious and discussion about it was held exclusively in private messages or a private subreddit for TBC members. This was out of a fear that any newbies that discovered it would quickly start abusing it and teleport people to it, rendering chat unusable. Well, why would chat become unusable? Because the wall isn't simply the wall. It's the wall of shit posts. Every command block executed a unique line of slash tell raw commands, which would enact popular memes in a textual medium, or bring up word scrambles and give the winners z testicles the in universe currency. Most impressively was an utterly colossal command block array created by a now sadly departed user, which would put every line of the B-movie script in chat until the movie was complete. Some command blocks would do other things, like generate an impossible potion to give the user. After various accidental teleports of users to the wall, it eventually became an open secret, and has been joked about as mysterious ever since. 
Unfortunately, a lot of the original shitpost commands are now broken due to command block formatting changes and updates. Still, a very iconic site on the server that not everyone goes to. Also, the wall's ranking in the lore quadrant is because it's confirmed to exist, but we aren't too aware of what its function is. Apparently, it's used to send advertisements for TBC directly into people's brains? Fun. Entry 6. Cannon Death Chunks. In early versions of Minecraft, it was fairly common in large servers for certain chunks of the server to suddenly become bugged and instantly kick any player inside them or even brick the server in rare instances. This required the trapped player to be rapidly teleported out or have their position in their player data file manually changed. This was made a lore element by the creator of TBC and is generally kept under close wraps as to what its true nature is. What we do know though is that they act as 3D gaps inside universes, piercing through multiple of them. As such, they are used for multiversal travel. However, without knowing what you're doing, you can very easily mess up and end up in Null 0000, a shadowy universe that no one has ever returned from. This is the key location of ignorance, as a lot of aspects here are entirely unknown. All we know is that it is terrifying. Entry 7. Server Doomer. The Server Doomer was a barrier block with the maximum possible knockback enchantment. Created on July 22nd, 2019, or perhaps a day or so prior, the item would crash the server when using it to hit any entity that took knockback. This was presumably due to the calculations required to check how many blocks the entity traveled, specifically the internal detection mechanism having to check an absurd amount of chunks to see if the mob hit anything. This is speculation though, it just worked. Over the years, it has since lost how effective it was, though at the time it was said to have caused a ton of damage and drama due to it being widely distributed. Other server destroying items and machines would later be developed, such as the short lived server kamikaze, a device which would instantly brick the server by teleporting a pig that the player was riding to the bit limit y variable. Such as while X and Z coordinates are restricted to 30 million by 30 million, the Y limit was only soft blocked at 30 million and could be bypassed by hopping from one entity to another or by riding one with levitation. The exploit with being able to teleport the mob while riding one uh, has since been patched, however. Another example is the fat Deddy Breaker which didn't actually brick the server, it was just a world edit wand with various commands written on the lore that would presumably cause enough lag to crash the server. This one was just kind of funny to be honest. Entry 8. Coaster Builder. Alright, on to this one. This one is actually extremely old, dating back to around August 2015. I may be wrong on that, it's kind of hard to do the dates really early on, like pre-2016, because the Discord hadn't actually been made yet for the server. And you'll see with a lot of these early ones that uh, it'll be very hard to pin down a date that's actually really good at all. But um, anyways, b back to Coaster Builder. To explain this one, we'll have to explain the server's old rank hierarchy. Back then, the server was much closer to a regular server, and was distinguished primarily by the fandom it was a focus of. There were various ranks, such as Builder, Builder Plus, Pro Builder, then Hero, and Legend. Beyond that, there were Staff ranks. You would be given the prior mentioned ranks if you had built something of decent quality, with Legend only being given to the most insane build projects of the era, to the point where only one or two people ever had it. Now, what was Coaster Builder? Well, it was a special rank, and plugin the current owner of the time had hyped up tremendously. 
for those who built a bomb ass roller coaster or two, they would get access to the rank and the special plugin, which would allow them to design custom roller coasters in a previously impossible way. As it turns out, it would be basically impossible, and Coaster Builder was never added to the server. Notoriously so. It became an extremely early joke of the community, akin to Half-Life 3. Ultimately, this reputation would outlast even the Builder rank system and Steven's ownership. Entry 9. <laughs> Oh boy, this one could use a video in of itself, and it's hard to figure out where to start. Essentially, J was two fake identities used by a compulsive liar to gain status in the server. The first was a suicidal Russian immigrant who was orphaned and had experienced like a million tragedies. It's worth noting that the actual user behind this uh, was 12 to 13 years old so their understanding of these concepts was flawed even to the surface level. Most others were extremely young at this time too, so they managed to believe the act. Constant suicide baiting would culminate into a supposed suicide note that goes as follows. My name is Jeff. I'm going to kill myself too. But this is my autobiography. October 23rd. 1995, I was born to my parents, but I was put for adoption. On September 14th, 1995, I was adopted by my adopted parents. Basically, I can't remember anything for three years until December 23rd, 1998, when I had my first memory, which was my mom dying in a car accident. Four years later, I'm seven and I'm in first grade. A kid named stabs a pencil through my hand. I break his jaw. Eleven years of death, my dad blaming me for my mom's death and a missing brother later. I had had enough and I moved away. This we would be the last time I'd have contact with my family. Two years later, my dad kills himself. I go to his funeral and the reading of his will. My sister doesn't show up. I get nothing, but since she didn't show up, I get everything. Last week, I thought I found her and spent a shit ton of money to fly to Russia. But it turns out, it wasn't her. Whoopsie fucking do, the present. As you can see, he was quite the character. Literally. Uh, he would also pretend to be violently drunk, contributing to lines such as, I want these fucking mini corn dogs. He would also later have his wife supposedly kidnapped and be stalked, then later faked a cancer diagnosis, where he went to the hospital, which was supposedly a 40 minute long drive, but he got there in 10 by speeding. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. And another problematic user posted the full docs for the 13-year-old behind Jeff to the current subreddit. The second Jeff comes in later, masquerading as the person that the 13-year-old stole the identity from. The charade went on for a while before he was eventually driven out. Entry 10. Fat Fuda Scandal. Alright, so this one is just gross. This is what I meant with the content warnings in the beginning. I do want to note that the person who made this a thing regrets it totally, and is an entirely different person now. Honestly, it's one of the worst things on the list, though Captain Layer 1, due to its shocking nature making it and other things like it, very well known. It refers to an old lore plot point where the company found it would abduct women and subject them to horrible experiments behind public eye. This would include giving them male genitalia and turning them into super soldiers. On the server itself, there exists even to this day archived items such as severed food a cock and food a serum. I really don't want to say this shit, because it's, it's awful. In particular, 
is known for many horrific stuff like this in the past. And as stated, the creator regrets this immensely. They were, and still are, under 18, falling victim to vile content like many others with unrestricted access to the web. A few years later, and they desired that anything like the Fuda experiments would become decidedly retconned. More recently though, doubt is in the air as the darker aspects of the company are reclaimed and made out to be a genuine threat. So its status remains in limbo. Layer 2 Build Limit Summit The second layer, where your feet hit solid ground. The tip on the top, where the day-to-day -day manifests and more about this new world reveals itself to you. It's a long fall down. Make sure you watch your step. Entry 1 <laughs> Have four testicles. An established concept in the server's multiversal lore is that every sentient entity has a second set of testicles, regardless of sex, located inside the nipples, usually. These secondary balls store key data to the entity's existence and are used by the multiversal TBC to assign a UUID or Universal Unique Identifier. These are an actual thing in Minecraft, as each player has their own UUID that will always refer to them regardless of name changes. UUIDs can duplicate across universes, signifying that one character in that universe is the same as the other, just being an alternate self. Though never repeat inside a universe. In cases where secondary balls are removed from a person, they are more or less dead, and removing only one essentially corrupts the self to incomprehensible madness. Entry 2 Different worlds are other lores. This entry is varied. It was one of the entries from the original version of the iceberg, uh, which took a lot of mythic inspiration as opposed to the generally fact-based iceberg we have now. However, this one is still here, so it must have some truth, right? Well, what it refers to as worlds are the in-game Minecraft dimensions. Using a plugin on the server fittingly called Multiverse, various worlds can be hosted and entered on one server. The ranking of it on a the fake to real scale is unknown because in some places it's correct, while in others it's false. For example, the world Reversal City on the server corresponds to Reversal Point City in the server's main lore, and therefore has a direct tie to that lore. An early version of another universe was once referenced as the Nether of one of the survival campaigns, though that survival world is the same universe as Reversal City, just earlier in time. Another example of separate worlds that exist in the same in-lore universe are Reversal City and 3.0, where 3.0 is acknowledged as a landmass northeast of Reversal Point known as Montana. Entry 3. A f made the Heaven Stairway Incident. This one is true because I made it. And I won't go too far into detail because I literally made a 47 minute video about it back in May, but too long didn't read, I made the troll face incident format through this meme. After the release of the video, I actually made a meme that went even further, that being a joke on Twitter that combined the I flam my penis in the car door meme with Parappa the Rapper, and this gave the penis meme mo mainstream popularity, and the Parappa element got reused in other meme formats. This might be a topic for another day, though. Uh, don't want to be too self-congratulatory. Hell, I'm even omitting a lot of the stuff I personally did on the server already. Entry 4. Death of Eyes. Alright, this is a weird and complicated one. In the World RP lore, Eyes was a pet parrot of a user. 
World RP was a world and roleplay in the server, which lore-inspired characters would become the heads of state to various nations. As such, World RP is its own in-lore universe. Now, one user, sp one day mentioned how Eyes was dead and was killed off with a cookie. The actual Eyes on the server was killed too, but where things got weird is after the initial incident. Because Sp didn't kill the parrot on the server, he just hid him in a wall and killed an imposter parrot named Eyes. However, the Eyes in the lore was considered canonically dead and was superseded by Chairman Eyes, an actual intelligent bird character. But then the Eyes on the server died anyway after accidentally falling into the void. It was a subject of mockery from the user base because of how stupid and needless it was. The image of this dumb ice cream creature murdering a dude's pet bird by accident just kind of stuck with people. Entry 5. Mac Mario. Oh ho, 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 boy, Mac Mario. This one could also be made into its own video if I really wanted to. Mac Mario is a character in the lore. Outside of the canon, people were speculating on how to make a new lore character. Jaffk, a former staff member as I mentioned previously, just came up with Mac Mario and the rest is history. Originally, Mac was going to look like a strange version of the Pringles guy, but elderly and with yellow eyes. Eventually though, he was tied to an edit of an elderly Mario that had some touch-ups to include things like Mac written on the hat instead of an M. His skin was also a deep tan. In the lore, Mac was the owner of various food enterprises, Mac Mario's Diner, Mac Mario Pizza, and most importantly, MacBook Pros due to his love of books. This restaurant was a large building in the heart of Reversal Point, combining Italian-American cuisine with free books. But that'll be one thing to bring up later. He had a partnership with a company called Chumbly Cheese, now known as Ch- he wanted them to send an animatronic for Mac Mario Pizza, where it could be used to add more joy to the restaurant. When the owner of Chumbly Cheese, Chummy, noted that Mac didn't have room for a stage, Mac had the idea to make a hybrid animatronic with locks so that he could wear the suit and perform in person. After weeks, putting every expense an hour into the animatronic, Mac was ready. He tried putting on the suit, but the locks backfired, clicking the suit back into place like it would be for the endoskeleton. He was pierced through instantly, slowly bleeding to death in agony as he crawled his way toward Chum. He was declared missing, but Chummy and Brubra had found him long prior. They couldn't turn the robot on, leading to them finding the body, which they hid in fear of it ruining their brand. Now it sits on ice, waiting. Waiting to wreak havoc, because when Mac died in the suit, he was split into his good self and his bad self. Mac was a genuinely good man, so the good half was more or less just a complete, pure soul. But the evil was unformed, animalistic, bare, and it sapped into water, creating Mac Trap. What happened to the good half? Well. Mac Mario has many mysteries. Maybe you'll find out about that in future videos. Entry 6. Lore Cannibalism. Well, I go from one with a lot of depth to one that's just kind of a shitpost. This was also an entry from the original Iceberg, and I believe it's the first entry that has a meme scale entry. Yes, this one is kind of a joke, but it isn't baseless. The race of cake people, spurs, and hitherto unmentioned dreams all appear very similarly. This has led to a theory called the Common Interstellar Ancestor Theory, postulating that all three species share a common ancestor who had developed interstellar travel in the past. After arriving, they adapted to their new homes in various ways, explaining the differences. There are no traces of their civilization yet seen. 
Now, you may wonder why it needs to be interstellar, or even just expect this to tie back into cannibalism. Well, jerks and spurs are extraterrestrial in origin, while cake people are native to Earth. And if you remember from the article, they are people that mostly look like ice cream of various flavors, usually mint chocolate chip. The cake people are self-explanatory, while the trees are more of an outlier to begin with. But they could be rainbow sherbet, I guess? The point is, they're all desserts. Where is the biological connection? Does a cake person eating cake count as cannibalism? That's the premise behind this entry. Entry 7. Wimps McMuffin In 2016, a former owner named Wimp went to McDonald's for his birthday. Apparently where they live, McDonald's tends to give out a free McMuffin to people on their birthday. However, when they went there, the staff refused to give them a muffin, resulting in a fit on the part of the user. Later, they told the story on the server. One user, Z, found it funny and laughed at them in chat. This upset Wim greatly, so they banned Z and made a rule saying that owners could do whatever they wanted to. This incident ended up becoming a legend, as it was the first major thing of note since the dramas from 2015 that caused a huge stink. So all the horrible incidents involving what followed were pinned on the blame of the McMuffin incident, which included server takeovers and more drama. This led into dramas with other users and is a point of blame for even what was the biggest loss of build progress in server history. Yes, a single bad birthday with a McMuffin was more or less a villain origin story. Wimpin has apparently chilled out after permanently taking their leave from which I'm glad for. If, someone, if they somehow see this, um, note that this wasn't meant as a jab or anything, I'm just kind of documenting the server and this is something that was impactful, so... If you're there, good luck, dude. Like, Godspeed. Entry 8. BFF6. Okay, so first of all, I have no idea why the image for this one has it set as real. This is a meme entry, as there was never a BFF6. It's useful to discuss what BFF was, though. BFF, standing for Banned from Fret, was a clade of users who were, well, banned from fact. Initially, it was relatively chill, but over its five iterations caused a lot of havoc. You know how in comics sometimes there'll be a group of supervillains who band together to plot against a hero? It was like that, but a lot sadder and more personal. The last one, BFF5, was the most strange. Essentially, the plan was to get a bunch of banned users together to freak out the server and make it look like it was another iteration. When all that really constituted BFF iteration as just having those banned users in the same place and plotting to fuck with the server in the first place. They tried to trick users into thinking they had face reveal photos even after one user was really badly affected by the very same thing in the prior iteration. Two of the users weren't really into it, and were acting as moles to the server. What happened next is a fucking series of espionage, where S becomes a regular double agent to triple agent. His role is complicated because Eric, the leader of BFF5, told him to be a double agent for him by pretending to be an agent of server staff and telling them lies about BFF5's progress, all the while he was already being a legitimate double agent for the server. So yeah, it got messy, but nothing too bad came of it to my knowledge. Minecraft server politics is goddamn weird. Anyway, BFF6 was joked about a few times after that, including trying to trick banned users by implying its existence in posts to the subreddit, which they could still see. Besides that, though, it was just never a thing. Good riddance. Entry 9. TBC employees are reincarnated. Welp, yep, this one's a doozy. Not only is it insane, but it's completely true in the lore. 
If you remember the Hoopla Potion entry from Layer 1, I believe I mentioned that TBC primarily uses Hooplonium as an energy source. Now, in the main Hoopla Power Plant, or TBC HPP for short, there's a room which, if entered, will instantly kill any users inside and revive them with wiped memories as a completely loyal TBC worker. It goes further though. It's canon that TBC has made a deal with the devil, which isn't even demonstrated to exist beyond this interaction. There are various hell-like dimensions, but none of them has a confirmed Satan. Regardless, they made a deal with them. If someone dies in a TBC facility, they own the rights to their soul, and then recreate them as a TBC employee. This is what's really going on in the power plant room. It just cuts the chase and kills you, and you get they get your soul. <laughs> Entry 10. Bob Coy. <sighs> this one is unfortunately real. Another big subject matter warning on this one. Robert J. Bob Coy is the founder and former senior pastor of Calvary Chapel... F his connection to the server was sparked by a very important user during his promotions of his church, which was the Calvary Chapel. He was a big meme in the community where people would make memes using his face, even up to an emote on the Discord. Uh, the user noted that Bob had to resign, but chalked this up to affairs and a porn addiction and noted that he came off as a good guy. He even founded a corporation called Four Kids of South Florida to care for orphans and children in the foster care system during the 90s. So, where did things go wrong? In November 2017, Coy was accused of child molestation over the course of years. It wasn't until 2018 that the scandal would become known to the server, whereby all traces of him were scrubbed from the Discord. The user that had spread his likeness to begin with was lambasted for promoting the man and downplaying his moral follies. The user has since changed their position to believing the allegations after gaining more insight on it. I can only hope that Bob rots in the same hell he spent so long preaching against. Entry 11. Ivan Possession. <sighs> this one just kind of sucks. Meme entry, real. Without going into too much detail, this entry was added in the brief period that a very young Russian teen, and no, it wasn't Jeffy Petrini, was on the server. They clearly were too young and vulnerable to be on the internet, yet they were there. During their stay, they ended up stirring a lot of shit until their inevitable ban. What does I possession refer to? Well, they made some spooky edits of their face and then asked for it to be added to the iceberg. That's it. Don't want to be mean and say no, so there it is. I if you're out there, hope you're doing better, man. Entry 12. Salt Shelter 7. Oh boy, the salt shelters. This would normally be a meme entry like BFF6, but there's actually ambiguity if a 7th slash 6th salt shelter happened or not. The salt shelters were physical structures on the server that users would enter during drama to hide from the saltiness. They were built by various users and in various forms, including a space station one. The first salt shelter was made by a former user called N, and they went up to five iterations. Salt Shelter 5 was thought to be lost for some time, but has been found. Salt Shelter 6 was thought of as lost, and honestly, this entry probably should have been called Salt Shelter 6 because that's what all the requests for were for it in the iceberg, but. Salt Shelter 6 does exist and even has a warp on the server. It's just bare bones and incomplete. Besides this warp, its only other mention is in one Discord message. Now, what about 7? Well, where things get really weird, 
Is that in my original notes for this video, I mentioned that there were 10 different salt shelters, and that the seventh was lost but recently found. This isn't true to my knowledge, though interestingly there is a warp to salt Authorized salt shelter. Spooky. Entry 13. Fanfic Library. Ho ho, the fanfic library. In the early, early ages of the server, back in 2015, the server had a very strange bleed through of the fandom's cringe community that meshed with the regular fandom the server was based on. Somehow. This led to a lot of early fucked up content, such as randomly generated ad-lib stories with sexual elements, and generally the most depraved and incomprehensible bullshit twins could write. Hell, at the wall there was even complex shit posts that would generate messed up fanfics from various users online at the time. The amount of literature produced was so much that there was actually a library made in the server to house it, made by the former user Mal. It was thought lost by Orr, but has actually generally been remembered and still exists as Slash Warp fanfic. Entry 14. Dawn is Egg. Okay, ending off this layer and this video with one that is, all things considered, pretty nice. Dawn is a user that's more inactive now, but still pops in from time to time just has a lot on his plate, I guess. Anyway, one day, way back in the early days when S was owner, Don went AFK for a bit. When he came back, his player model was turned into a literal thrown egg model by S And he said, alongside this transformation, Don is egg. There is no prompt for this, it just sort of happened. Everyone thought this was really fucking funny, and it became an enduring meme throughout 2016, carrying on and passing to the present day. Don even has a custom egg roll that gives him a white name to this day. And with that, concludes the top two layers of the iceberg. We still have 12 to go. Next video will likely cover layers three and four. Um, but later on, we might restrict it to just one layer each because uh, the middle ones get really bulky. It's like one layer is like three of the layers I just covered today. Um, so due to the absurd size we'll be dealing with, uh, I, I might just do one layer for those middle layers. Um, additionally, information to research will become even more scarce as things get more specific and niche, but it shouldn't take nearly as long to make the video as this one did. I mean, my last upload was on the tail end of May, like I, I hadn't even graduated high school yet. If you like this, remember to subscribe and keep the bell or whatever turned on because I usually like making huge uploads like this all at once, and therefore the gap in uploads will probably still be pretty big. Considering this is a multi-part series though, I'll try to get my ass in gear, so to speak. I might do a layer zero next that explains base concepts like TBC, depending if people get too confused. So let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, as well as anything you want cleared up. And you can follow me on Twitter at Ebola underscore granola, and that's about it. Ciao.